Hi everybody, this is Joanna. How is everyone doing? So excited to be here. Um, I have been inspired for quite some time to come forward in a bit more of a personal way. In all of the years that I've done um, all of the work that I've presented, I've really kept a lot of my personal stories um, to myself. Um, I shared little bits and pieces and kind of threaded the the minutia of um, my whole experience um, in various ways, very subtle and um, um, honoring ways to myself and also to all those that I've co-created with and I've come here with sacred contracts with. Um, and their my teams are um, and have been for quite some time. They've been so patient and so loving with me to really start sharing my story in a new way, in a unique way. Um, through personal vlogging um, and sacred vlogging. Um, and so that's what I'm going to intend in this session of our sacred communion. Um, knowing that in the many years that I've been um, moving through the, um, the process of awakening and um, self-actualization, the becoming of my whole soul self, the renewal of all that I am as soul, the renewal of all that I am as divine mother and divine father, part of where I'm stepping into is really mastering who I am as a soul. Um, to do that is really claiming and owning and honoring um, all that I've become. And when we think about what we've become, it's everything in between, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that the emotions and our multidimensional experience can offer us, which is that beautiful dance and that soup of source that is the all challenging and traumatic at times yes <laughs> but it allows us to be you know who we are allows us to be the masters of who we are um you might hear some not something in my eye you might hear um the kids yelling and screaming they're playing video games <laughs> downstairs but part of this personal experience for me that i'm stepping into is to allow myself to be more vulnerable um, and with my sacred tribe that have been with me for so very long and honoring who I am as this beautiful um, divine feminine, very wise and very strong and very empowered. But what it's um, how I've come to this new experience of who I am in owning and claiming who I am um, in all aspects and sharing myself in a more intimate way so that my personal story can be a part of the collective healing. Um, because part of my personal story is I'm getting all the clumped. <laughs> um, part of my personal healing and part of my story is what I'm here to be a master in assisting heal and resolve the collective issues. Many of those are um, um, abuses in many different forms and fashions. Um, we say abuses and they cause triggers, but we want to allow those words to just be transmuted because Source and all of the heavenly teams are with us to transmute what we know as triggers <laughs> but it's only to allow us that softening of recognition of who we are what we've come with into transmute and the mastery that we have and that we are in those transmutions transmutations and just allowing them to be a part of our story allowing them to be the beauty of who we are allow them to be the stories of who we are the strength of who we are um, they're called many things sometimes it's the um, healing of the inner child the inner child comes with those psyche minutiae that we're all here to heal for the collective and for ourselves. And we take on some of those roles so that we can feel the depths of compassion so that we can heal and press out because compassion as love is the strongest vibration in our, our existence. And so in doing so, we allow the highest vibration to press out through evolution. And that's why sometimes some of us come with very profound, um, you know, soul experiences to, to, to transmute. Um, and as I swallow very deeply <laughs> and composing myself, <laughs> part of these experiences, I want to be a part of our sacred co-communion um, with one another and have that free and um, beautiful sacred space to know that we are protected, we are honored, we are being bathed with holy light in these sacred sharings, to know that in the safe space of who we are um, and me offering a bit of my intimate story um, of who I am, and what I've come to express and explore and experience as a soul, a unique soul, that it will add to the healing of the collective. Because it's needed and required for everyone, right? And it's part of my personal story, it's part of my personal truth that I've seen in many different reflections and many different mirrors and I've been co-creating and calling in 
various beings to assist in triggering me to go deeper and wider and richer into healing those experiences. And um, one of them is obviously many, as I've talked about many times before, as I've come here as a high vibrational being, a crystal child, so that I can experience myself in this very beautiful time of ascension for humanity. Of course, when you're born, you're not, you don't know that. <laughs> you know, you're just being a kid and doing your kid stuff. But I understand the process of why I was feeling and why I experienced what I did when I was, um, why I was you know, going through the minutia of what I was. Um, not feeling as if I was accepted for who I was and the expression of who I was. Um, and the many mental abuses and the emotional abuses that came along with that and the physical, um, the physical manifestations that come along with those abuses, um, you know, being um, ostracized and being berated and belittled for who you are as that creative, sens sensitive being, um, not only within, you know, dynamic circles of, you know, the close understanding that we know, family circles, friendship circles, and school circles, but also that of the social collective, because we're, sh we're shown, you know, experiences where this is what you should look like this is how you should be and these are the archetypes that we're supposed to follow and live up to and they're completely imbalanced and not in accordance with what spirit and soulful living is all about so i mean i was born in 1969 and the um the ideal divine feminine experiences and archetypes weren't oh i didn't see any of that that were embodied and 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 being shown to me other than um you know, this one very special person in my life, and she's with me right now in spirit. Um, thank you for your divine reference and all of the divine mothers and sisters that are with me in this because it's very important for me in speaking my truth and in living this truth and owning and honoring it as a part of the ride that I've been on and how I've been able to be who I am right now. And I say be, not in how I have assisted helping and serving and all of the ascension work that I've come up with. I say me as being me as Joanna. Because oftentimes I've been so focused on helping humanity and serving my double and triple, you know, soul contract. Um, I've forgotten about the me part of it. You know, I've put so much focus and so much of my entire life into understanding the minutia of the psyche, understanding human behavior, understanding the um, suffering. You know, I'm being experiencing the suffering at all levels that I forgot about the me part of it because it was very traumatic and painful for me. Um, to keep um, um, owning and honoring, if you will. So there, that's a part of mastery is when you get to that phase of really owning and being who you are and being okay and sharing your story so you can help others in that. Um, but this sacred vlog, if you will, is not only me moving into a new honoring of me so that I'm rebirthing me. Um, and it will serve in whatever way it's meant to. Um, it's from the integrity of me owning and honoring that part of me so that I can fully be me. Um, and I understand from my teams, they're, they're offering me that yes, it will help many, many people because my story is, is not unlike many. And how do we move through those very traumatic experiences? How do, we, how do we move through those, you know, however we've termed them and defined them, we wanna really release ourselves from that because those are the things that we say are triggers. It's the beautiful and elegant, elegant dance that we are soul and we are a spirit. We are an eternal essence of experience. And some of those experiences are not fun, um, but they assist us in growing and pressing out and really being at this point now where I can say, I truly claim all that I've been through. Yes, all of the stuff that I've created as a part of the human offering, that's my offer to creation, you know, and unconditionally, you know, it's always been an unconditional offer for me. And those of you that know me understand that vibration. Um, um, not for any other reason, but just for me to know that I, at the end of my life, I know I've served. You know, I know that I've done everything in my power to serve from whatever I've been gifted and whatever I've been blessed through those experiences. But now it's a different part of me. I'm, I'm feeling this really profound shift. You'll have to excuse me if I get emotional. Because I'm going through it with you. That it's a part of this new becoming of knowing that we are all in the same story. And part of my sharing my story will assist me in becoming more vulnerable and helping at a human level that is so important to me because I've detached and held myself separate because of the pain that it continues to um, bring forward and transmute. So they're showing me right now that as I'm doing this, I'm also I'm 
I'm also helping transmute those that are connected with me in a soul level. So this is why it's important that I share this. I didn't know that until just now, so thank you. And why yesterday when I was doing my sacred sound, I was, they were, all of these collectives were living through me and speaking this light language and these, these codes. And they were telling me that this is for you, this is for you, this is for you, all of those beings that are connecting with our videos. Um, for those that know at the soul level, and they'll feel it. And if you don't, that's okay too. Um, but just know that you have so many celestial universal friends and families that are living through. So me and sharing this, um, and again, I want to go back because it's important that I claim this and own this for me. And it's important that I, I show this and I honor this in you. That in this sharing, it's me becoming me and it's me claiming me. It's me saying that, yes, my life was pretty hard in being me. It was really hard to be me. It was really, really hard. <laughs> And I'm stepping out of it now as a claiming, not as the energy of a victim. And those are the healings that we call others in throughout our lifetime. So that we absolutely heal those Akashic. That energy of victimization and persecution has been for many, many lifetimes of being persecuted as a light worker, healer, a white witch, and all, all the terms and the words we give those that want to come forward and press out in light um, and serve the omnipresence that is the one source creator. And the thing that I have come with, which I'm so very blessed, I'm so very honored, and I didn't know until recently that others were experiencing them in their own unique experience in a much different way, meaning that I am able to see and sense things at a level that many are not able to. And I didn't know that for much of my life. I didn't know that um, people were not able to see and feel into other timelines and feel themselves in other timelines or have flash images of themselves in a timeline. I wasn't, you know, I thought that it was just, you know, people could see it, but nobody ever talked about it. Um, but now I know that I, in moving through those injuries and those wounds of persecution that were very, very traumatic, it leads to the co-creations in this lifetime until that victimization is healed. And knowing that when I stand in my power, I'm not a victim anymore. Just like this moment right now, me, me honoring all that I am and sharing it in a vulnerable way with those that, I'm, that are so dear to me is allowing me to reach out in new ways to the collective and help heal that through this sharing. Um, and releasing that idea of victimization, of trauma. Um, and standing in your power and saying, I'm, I choose to have the voice for that, that child that didn't get to have it when the trauma occurred or that lifetime where it didn't occur because I was put to death or whatever it might be. You're claiming the voice of that and saying, I'm going to talk about it now. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to share it because I'm claiming my sense of my new sense of self. And it's okay for me to be vulnerable because I'm at a place now where I absolutely in my oneness with source, those fears are being released. Those fears are being released of being persecuted. Those fears are being released of being whatever those fears are from all of those lifetimes that hold us back in not necessarily denial but not that full sense of sharing and this is really important for this phase that i personally am moving into is allow myself to be shared in a way that honors the all that i am in the story that i have come to assist in resolving and healing for the divine feminine for the sacred child for the divine feminine to be honored in her body as beautiful and sacred and honored you know as a beautiful elegant leader and healer and teacher and guide and guardian and through the minutiae that I've personally moved through, many of the experiences I had of abuse and, um, you know, physical abuse um, um, and rape and, and molestation, those had demeaned and um, devalued my body. Um, and there were deep wounds and scars anytime that anyone's will or control is um, placed upon another and the right use of will of not being honored, then that causes trauma in a multidimensional way, physically, mentally, emotionally, and theoretically that must be cleared and cleansed. Um, and those wounds are a part of um, that becoming vulnerable, that you're accepting it, you're honoring it, you're healing it. And you're accepting, you're honoring, you're healing all of those that were in that experience. That's when you can fully let go and release it, transmute it and just honor the story that it was taught and that you had brought it you know, to the existence. Um, not allowing it to to be okay but to fully forgive it and to forgive those that 
the participation was included in, that's how you truly gain your sense of wholeness because there are all aspects of our oneness that is for the collective meaning to be healed. Um, and it's, a whole, it's not just a one-time thing. It's like moment for moment for those that have gone through rape and abuse. <clears throat> you know, it's a constant movement of self-appreciation and self-ownership and self-acknowledgement. You know, that this is a part of my story and uh, I'm standing and owning that story um, as, as something that has, has allowed me to, to, to be a part of a collective story that's important for us to heal, for us to speak truthfully with integrity on, at a multidimensional level, to see the wounding that it occurs, um, um, the wounding that occurs on all halves, on all parts, <laughs> and to claim it and to really start healing it um, in that way, to, to, to own it within who you are. Um, and to look back on them and see the minutiae that occurred around it, because oftentimes what I've been working on the last couple of years is those energies of, um, of experiences that bring the great trauma, trauma that is, a, is a, a journey to explore and to heal and express and experience in multidimensional ways, because you're, you're allowing yourself to be healed at different various levels until that sacred seed comes to this point right now, which I'm at, as being reborn. And so, and it's a journey of healing. <clears throat> and it's a beautiful and sacred journey. <clears throat> and why I wanted to call this a sacred vlog, because it's a sacred experience that I'm offering vulnerability to know that healing those experiences, especially if they go on for prolonged times, it's a journey of self-love and self-honor and self-acceptance and then forgiveness all over again. And it's not just a one-time thing. And it's important that we continue to continue um, the process of self-care and self-love. Um, and why we can come together and honor that vulnerability within ourselves and say it's okay. Um, take one experience at a time and honor it. Um, honor it for um, how it's allowed you to come to this point now and say I'm worthy to heal this now. You know, I'm, I'm strong enough. I can heal this now. I am great. I'm so strong. <laughs> I can heal anything. God's with me. Right? Spirit's with me. Source is with me. All my teams, all my guides. If you knew how many beings are with us right now, <laughs> um, healing the divine feminine on how we have been berated and demeaned for the beauty that we carry and for emulating that beauty. I remember many times throughout my career, I remember, you know, walking to and from work and, and I would like to look nice and I would like to, you know, have confidence in, in how I present myself. But many times just in living in my beauty, it created so much, um, you know, such, so, so many weird sexual energies you know from from many you know um you know jealousy and and ignorance and um you know sexual connotations i mean there was just so much weirdness about it you know and that's part of the parts that i want to bring forward and say enough you know enough honor the divine feminine for being the sacred life givers that we are the the body is sacred the sexual centers are sacred the the expression of who we are is sacred and allow through my expression of what I've been through um, to stand in my power and say, it's enough, you know, enough of the, you know, a, a divine woman can be presented and beautiful and strong and elegant and not have, um, not be subjugated to the, the, the sexual demeaning, berating experiences. When we carry ourselves with, with, with sacredness, with sacredness, and part of those, part of the wounding, and I'm, I'm speaking very, with great integrity, with great honesty, and I'm speaking with great fluidity of the threading that I'm experiencing in the minutia of early, early um, sexual um, um, inappropriateness to how it affects through the life of growing up and how we view our bodies and how we accept our bodies and how we perceive our bodies and then how one goes within one's beliefs about sexuality and moving through those intimate moments and what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Because most often than not, we don't, we don't learn about the sacred self until we're at a point where we've gone through a lifetime of 50 years, moving through a whole bunch of stuff. We can be this at the earliest of ages. And this is why it's important for me to tell 
a part of who I am in a very vulnerable and intimate way so that it will assist others in saying, no matter what age you are, you have the right to feel sacred. You have the right to feel in full honor, honor and honoring and ownership of who you are, honoring and ownership of your body as being sacred and that the voice of the body, you are sacred. You're sacred and your voice is the your voice is the gateway of your body and how it is meant to be treated and your beliefs and your honoring of you and the living in this. And at the various earliest of ages, you can begin to renew yourself in this way of self-owning and self-honoring and claiming who you are. And I understand that I moved through those experiences that I'm still, I still go through moments of my healing, absolutely. And every time that I call in those experiences of karma um, for others to trigger me on really going deeper within to own and claim your strength and your power so that um, another level of divinehood can be known in matter form. And that's huge. It's really huge and it's really, really important. It's really important, you know? And I, I don't have words to say how important this is because it we can't be expressed in that because the divine feminine, the suppression that we've all experienced as divine feminine and children has been suppressed and, and warped and um, highly neglected for eons. We're sacred. We're sacred. Sacred, 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 sacred. Children are sacred. They're the evolutionaries sacred and those experiences that we have early on from those that we trust and those that um, are there to caretake for us and those that you know are there to you know protect us and guide us and then your level of trust that you have in yourself and society and all those that you place you know your your beliefs and expectations on um, that gets warped throughout time and you continue to attract those experiences because those deep wounds of not being cared for and protected at such an early age ends up just calling in those experiences and over and over and over again, because nobody teaches us how to honor and respect and live from the space of source, because there's been so much, um, so much, um, you know, deviance and neglect at such early ages for so long for humanity. And then for the divine feminine, the, the, the innate natural energies that come forward in guardianship of the children have been suppressed and berated. And, um, you know, the mental and emotional mind games that go into um, certain traditions and relationships um, and behaviors that berate divine feminine for um, the energies and the experiences that when you do try and press out and be confident and a powerful leader, get turned around and you know then experience experiences like narcissism those are very real experiences that damage the sense of self you know when others lack of self and others need for control and others need for drama um to feed their their energy systems because they're not aware of how to do it themselves because they've been brought up in social situations that have been warped in control and traditions of you know limitation and i mean it's just so this is what i mean i've experienced all of this because i know exactly how it's threaded to every aspect of our socioeconomic systems that are absolutely not serving humanity and why you know i see now i always see things after the fact on why it's important for me to share a part of my intimacy who i am and if i could write a book <laughs> on the things that I've experienced and what I've seen. It's been hard being me. And I say that with honor and I claim it because it is the strength of who I am to be able to see the inner sight allows me glimpses into things that need to be changed, need to be brought forward in ways that we can heal it. And through my own story, you know, 
knowing that I can be a beautiful and strong divine feminine and I can have the most beautiful creative experiences and know that there has been so much um, they offered in a couple of videos ago about just handing over our power because we see it on TV or we're told that these people in our society are um, upholding to citizens and leaders and so on and we just we just offer our power over to them you know meanwhile there's so many um, there's so many underground um, um, experiences that just thread deviance and, and control and all of these are going to come to the forefront to be healed over the next couple of years for humanity to see who have we been giving our control over and how have we not been talking about these things that have been going on right underneath our noses that it's not okay it's not okay it's not okay and the more that we each claim it for ourselves in our own unique stories we help all of those that have not yet found their voice because we're one we're one we're allowing the voices of those that have not found it yet to come forward and say yeah yeah my body was abused yeah it didn't feel good and now i gotta work through that that, that darkness and i gotta work through that that saying that okay now i'm going to claim my body is my right and my right to be sacred my right to speak sacredly about my body my right to set my commandment of my body and want and, and allow myself to actually speak up when it's not being honored in whether it's a whether it's a, a whistle and a, and a comment i have the right to speak up about that i have the right to speak in honor of who i am and to be treated in that way because as a little girl and I'm just speaking from my own personal perspective on divine feminine. It, it, how does it feel when the women are um, presented in such a way that is of sexual satisfaction? Where is our place vibrationally? Where is our place with intellect? Where is our place as leaders? Where is our place as um, divine, divine healers and life givers? Where are these archetypes? Where are these energies in our reality for our socioeconomic um, rebalancing? And um, I don't even want to say socioeconomic because it's not what 5D is. How can we thread these new experiences in greater balance and, and greater honor of who we are as sacred beings, as divine beings in matter? Because we do matter. We are the ones that create matter. Are we doing it from a limited perspective of control, greed, and manipulation. And many of the systems that we're coming from are that, you know, where the, we've given power away to the ones that we thought were supposed to take care of us and how those initial experiences of, of trusting, you know, well, what's going on with this trust issue, right? And then when you get into other relationships where they are narcissistic and there's energies going back and forth, which are just completely inappropriate, when you're just trying to keep the peace and keep balance and then things are being skewed and thrown off to make you feel less than, to make you feel in the wrong, to make you feel as if, you know, you're the one that's messing things up and you're the one that's trying to perpetuate problems and you're just sitting there being you, you know, trying to keep the peace. These are the self depleting, um, self um, deprecating experiences that stem from, from those experiences where you were, completely taken for granted and used as disrespected matter. That's why I've had this passion. It all matters. It all matters. And I want to change that. I want to be one that changes it. I want to walk in the essence of my own beauty and have my, my body, the emanations and the vibrations. I am sacred. I'm sacred. I will not be taken advantage of. I will not be lied to and manipulated to because I sense and I know those vibrations now and I've had to go through all of those minutiae so that I can say enough is enough. I'm going to start talking about it. I'm going to start sharing it and it will be a catalyst for others to move into their own healing and know when they're in their own strength of who they are and the renewal of who they are as a soul. They can come forward and say, you know what, so too was I. And it's time for me to say, you know what, I want to feel better about myself. And I want to know that when I walk, I walk as a soul. I walk as a soul. And anybody else's comment means it doesn't mean anything to me. Because I know who I am, a spirit. And I know that at some point they're going to wake up and want to know that they're sacred too. It all matters. Every cell of my body matters and it's sacred. 
and I will honor it as sacred. And what happened when I was a child and what happened when I was growing up and all of the, in, all of the incredible experiences that I say incredible because it's who I am now. Oh. The abuse is not okay. It's not okay. And we say abuse in a way that is transitioning and the healing of it. That's what we mean. Because I can claim it and I can say, hey, unconditional, let's see if we can be as unconditional as we can and start healing what needs to be talked about, start healing what needs to be um, unraveled, you know? Because all of those mental and emotional mind games that, that are played in all relationships need to be sorted out so that every sovereign being has their own right of will and their own free will to say, what's been going on is not okay. The lying, the manipulations, the brushing things under the rug, however it occurs. And it goes on in an infinite number of ways and that's okay because that's what everybody is healing at different levels. But the, the things that go on in early childhood are those stories of who we are as souls that why we call in what we call in throughout our whole lives until we stand in the power of who we are as divinehood and say, you're divine, you're divine. There's no need to be neglected. You're divine. You are sacred, you are divine. How may you know this? How may you live as this? And when we get that, that's when all of those other stories stop because those when the boundaries and the standards go and say, no, that's not okay. You can't talk to me that way. You can't treat me that way. You can't continue these games. It's not okay. It stops now. It's now. Now is no. No is a complete sentence and it stops now. And you get to say, I'm not taking on that lie. I'm not taking on that emotional abuse. I'm not taking on the mental abuse. I'm not taking on the yelling. I'm not taking it on. I choose to not take it on and I send it back to you in a bubble of love. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's what we move through, it's what we work through. But when you get to claim who you are as a sacred soul, when you get to claim who you are as a sacred being, then you allow others to say, so who am I gonna yell at now? <laughs> you know, who am I gonna throw my projections at now? Who am I going to tell the, who am I gonna tell the wrong? Who am I gonna manipulate now? You know, so that I can get away with what I'm getting away with or that I can I can continue doing what I'm doing without care on how it affects others. But that's how they need to feel it. Right? It affects everybody. Every, um, you know, I've, I've said this for a couple of years because I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, and my kids often, I, we, my kids and I often talk about this, about lying. And, you know, people say, well, there's always a right time to lie when you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And, you know, when they say they did a nice artwork and stuff like that. And I, um, for me, every, every, um, and you can't just blanket everything under one thing. And so just when I'm speaking these things, it's about me as a personal experience, as a divine being, wanting to um, allow sacred, personal, intimate stories to be brought forward in sacred space so that AI can assist in all those others that are also assisting them and also to claim who I am as a soul so that I can rebirth, be rebirthed in any way. Like fully claiming who I am and being okay and being intimate and sharing myself. Um, and it serves my purpose first and all others, it'll serve as well. Um, but I always follow my higher counsel. And if they want me to share my personal story and I'm ready to share it, then I will. Um, and, um, lying any type of lie that we offer one another in a relationship is um it pulls on the um sacredness of who we are as, as sacred beings so one might think it doesn't mean anything just to say oh i'm i'm gonna go out to the grocery store and and then perhaps you know go and do something different and you know whatever it might be it doesn't matter what it might be but those types of things and doing it in a way that, you know, we're quite honoring in a relationship, it should be. But any type of lie that, that proves 
the deviation, if you will, of not being truthful in any way is a lie. And it affects everybody in that circle. You know, <clears throat> not being truthful affects everybody. And that's what's being sacred is because we're building our way to be 5D. 5D is all, 5D is truth. It's all transparent. It's transparency and there should be nothing to hide, right? You can have those trustful moments when you're in that sacred relationship and just say, I'm going to need some like four hours just to myself today. I just need to just decompress and just be with me. And, you know, and in that loving and sacred experience, you absolutely have that inner trust with one another. But in many of the relationships and many experiences that really damage the sense of self around others is when there's lying and manipulation that's going on that are not um, appropriate and above board. And then it's turned back around to make others feel like they're the ones that are wrong or they're the ones that are you know, not hearing things correctly. And that's narcissism. Anything that is placed back on other people because there's no accountability by those that are actually doing it, that's narcissism and that's putting lack of sense of self and that's warping others' sense of who they are in that experience. And it's very real and it's very damaging. And then we have to ask ourselves, okay, how much of a part of this am I gonna play because I'm done? It's not okay. It's not okay. You figure out why you need to lie. You figure out why you need to manipulate everything to go in your manner, to go in your, your favor. You know, you figure out all that stuff and go and heal, you know, seek out various ways to heal yourself because there's an infinite number of ways that we can heal counseling and all of these things that we all need healing in. We all need healing, but if it doesn't get talked about and if it doesn't get brought forward and if we don't own who we are as sacred, then these experiences continue and the abuses continue and the dysfunction continues and the imbalances continue and then more children are brought into those engagements and entanglements and their sense of self gets disrupted. So lying is one of those experiences that you will see pull away from your sacredness. So sacredness is fully being able to stand in who you are as sacred. I have no need to lie, I'm sacred. I'm sacred. You know, and I treat you as sacred. You're sacred. I wouldn't lie to you. I won't, I won't lie to you. I'm sacred. I honor you. And that's where you build that sense of self with one another. And the kids know. They walk around. Yeah. Mom doesn't lie. She's sacred. She owns that truth. And these are things we all have to work out. Not by, not, not by bringing them up and it's nothing about blaming and shaming and anything because that's something that narcissism does as well. They, narcissism flips everything back around on you and it's all blaming and shaming because that's how that cloud of illusion is like, well, why is that my fault? And then everybody gets thinking, well, what did I do? You know, and then the person that is perpetrating narcissism walks out and they're living their, their fancy, going about doing whatever they're doing, having their ego fun. And you know, you're left sitting there totally depleted and your sense of self is just being ripped and pulled out of you. And the lies continue and, you know, you have to rebuild your sense of self. Your boundaries have been totally stepped on because you've given your trust to someone that said they honor you and they respect you. And that just pulls out the sense of self for everybody in a family situation. And I'm talking about it. And I will share my experience personally because it's been hard. It's been really hard. really hard it's been that path and journey that we get to claim you know and again there's no this is the minutia we have to go through to get to those really deep wounds and part of why i said that is because part of those karmic stories that we call in there's always a reason right there's always a reason why we thread what we do to one another because it it, it allow it has it it is the catalyst that makes us go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper within to find out the truth of why we attracted it, about why we are involved in it. And most often than not, it's for you to stand and claim and remember your divinehood as sacred, as powerful as truth, especially for divine feminine, especially for children, because of the eons that we've come from abuse and dishonor. And the only way to claim that back is to get down to the bottom and say, no, my body is sacred. I will not be treated this way. I will not be talked to this way. You know, reflect upon how we treat one another 
and everybody will have their own unique experiences to heal those deeper wounds to say every stage is a growing out stage of greater sacredness and so you're building those boundaries as you as you become more centered in your sense of self and your sacredness but you have to you have to go through that minutia journey of healing and say i'm sacred today today i'm sacred today i choose to be sacred i speak sacredly i treat myself sacredly i call in those that are also sacred and i pray for all of the children that I'm allowing them to know that there is sacredness in the omnipresence, there is sacredness and they can speak their truth and they can honor their bodies and they can speak for their bodies on their behalf. And they're able to say when, they're able to say when is enough enough and speak to those that they can trust. We need to start somewhere, right? And this is a sacred sharing that, that I'm coming forward and um, you know, moving through some of the things I've moved through. And along with it, I'm able to see the timelines that they're all connected with. And that's a mind kind of mind blowing in one respect because it's like I often tell my guides, you know, how, what what is this healing now? Like because I know multidimensionally what I can feel and heal, and and they're just saying, remind yourself of now, what the present. What are you what are you working on right now? All of the timelines will feel that healing, but what are you in now right now? And it might be, oh, just healing my you know, the trust of who I am. Like I trusted my intuition, I trusted myself, but I gave that, you know, I, um, I absolutely have incredible intuition. And as many times as my guides were showing me and telling me, I still gave that, that sense of power and trust to the person that I had said, you know, I believe everything in you. I mean, you're the person that said, you know, you care for me and you take care of me and all of those things. And that stemmed from the earlier childhood and injuries and traumas. When those that are in, say, power positions, you know, and why we even give our power away, you know, it, this is where being sacred, you, keep, you own your power. You stand in your power always. It's never giving any power to anybody. That's the difference. That's why I'm coming forward. This is the journey that I've been on to say, hey, whoa, what have we all been moving within? And is it okay for everybody? I'm sure it is. You know, but at a sacred level, at a 5D level, no, it's not. I mean, it, it'll be everybody's experience, but when you're divine and you're owning your divine hood, you're claiming your sacredness, those experiences will no longer occur. Those are things we've never been taught. We've never been taught. We're healing it for entire generations and, and lineage. You wouldn't believe how many divine feminine lineage we're healing right now by coming forward and say, it's not okay that we are seen and we are projected to simply be... Um, and I'm not, there's no, there's no judgment devaluing and anything in any way of what I'm saying, because I've, I've absolutely played every single aspect and role of it. And I honor every aspect of it. I honor it and I love it and I'm sacred in it. But there is, um, there is the undercurrent and societal traditional um, energies that we are all born within that have um, divine feminine in downplayed roles projected roles, traditionalized roles, and it affects how people are, treat people. It just does. If you're brought up in a family of very traditional experiences where women were in the kitchen and being just the, and I say just, and it's a profound role, but I'm saying that there is nothing outside. That's what I mean, just. The, care, the caretaker of the home and the children, far more profound than any outside job that you could ever imagine. And we all know that as mothers and as women that work, you know, two or three jobs and are doing an at-home job, plus taking care of the kids, plus taking care of the house, plus running them to school and doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, and all the things that a mother does that are not taken into any consideration, most often than not, um, all of those experiences um, are then projected into, well, that's all you are and that's what you are. And this is, those are the attitudes and behaviors that I've absolutely experienced and been a part of. No, no more, no more. Divine feminine is wise. Divine feminine can move all sovereignly to creatively as she wishes. And so let's start talking about our belief patterns and our feelings and our notions about oneness and fairness and unity and equity. Let's start talking about it in a beautiful, sacred, respectful way. I'm sacred. I'm absolutely sacred. I have great intelligence. I'm a great leader. However, we have known and dissected our society based on you know, these egocentric imbalances, they need to be rewritten and totally tossed up in the air. Tossed up in the air, shake it right out and bring in some new light.
it served us absolutely but now it's time to bring some inequality and now it's time to bring in some true wisdom that will absolutely serve the greater good that have been absolutely imbalanced and disenfranchised in every way and treated with disrespect treated with disregard treated as if our voices and our wisdom does not matter treated as if the intuitions of who we are and um, how we are able to heal through our intuitions how we're able to bring energy into any job and make it better any role any vocation and make it better to be connected with Gaia and make it more valued um, in all ways micro macro wildlife nature all things all ways and men also have these i'm saying the egocentric um, social systems that's what i'm talking about egocentric social systems about how we are judged how we are paid you know for jobs these have been going on for generations and generations and generations and generations and generations thousands of years thousands of years that we are healing thousands of years Every single person on this planet is healing those experiences. Every, whether you're in a male body or a female body, you are healing the divine feminine. You absolutely are. If you're a male and you're not, did not feel the freedom to express who you are as an emotional being, you did not feel the creative expression to be intuitive, you're healing your female, your divine feminine. And if you're not claiming it, if you're not owning it, if you're not caring for yourself on a regular basis through the rebalancing of your divine feminine, knowing that you are divine feminine, expressing it and allowing it to be what it is in you, as you it, then there will be continued imbalances and there will be continued resistance and struggles. And we're all healing the divine male and female. So that is a part of my beautiful sacred story and knowing that, um, what I experienced when I was a child and giving over my, my power and my trust to those that had supported me. And those moments that it was really hard to um, know what I knew. You know, this is, this is the point that, that I'm healing right now. I absolutely know what I knew. And those around me were telling me, no, you didn't. No, that couldn't happen. No, not from that person. Are you kidding? No, really? But that person, everybody likes that person. And, but this is just how it's all judged, right? It doesn't have to be anything that's being judged. That's not the story. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that when someone says something from truth and something from the sacredness of who they are, then it's truthful. <laughs> Just as a child, I spoke truth, you know, and I wasn't believed. And because I wasn't believed, it continued. And then my sense of self was completely warped. I knew what I was talking about. And then you get into situations of narcissism. Those you attract those same experiences because your soul says you haven't learned the lesson to stand in your truth and say, no, I know what I'm talking about. And if you want to play those games, then out you go. You know, off you go. Bye-bye. Because you won't allow that to happen again. And that's standing in your power, standing in your divinehood, acting divine, being divine, speaking divine, living divine, being truthful, your oneness with source, all, all is well. You're maintaining your truth. <clears throat> But from those early childhood experiences and why it's really important that we offer who we are with vulnerable truthfulness. I'm one with source. I have boundaries. I have set standards now. And I trust the vibrations that my bodies and my intuitions are telling me. And I will never ever deviate from that again, ever. Not for a minute. Not for a minute. Not for a minute. I won't be taken from, I won't be manipulated from. These games are over. I get to choose. And if I choose with great fervor, with great knowingness of who I am as alchemy with source, source is going to create a reality with me in that. And I get to choose. I get to choose. And my vibration and everything that I attract, because I've learned those lessons of self-empowerment, of self-beauty, of walking in the beauty and the grace of who I am. I know the energy and the vibration I put out. I know my truth. And if others want to play those games of still walking in masks and illusions, and they want to continue spinning the webs that they spin, then their soul will continue on the spiritual path of trying to awaken them until their lessons are learned. And that's when the karmic returns get deeper and more tough and more challenging and more traumatic. It doesn't have to be, but sometimes that's the density that ego pulls on. And the ego just 
wants to stay safe and it will continue doing what it's always known. And the spirit will continue to say, you're just going to keep getting karma until you come out in truth. <laughs> truth is truth. Truth, light, and love. If you're not living in truth, that light can't get to you. Light's trying, light's trying, light's trying, light's trying, light's trying. Every little lie, every little manipulation, it matters. And each, for each person, it's different, right? For each person, you know, am I being truthful and speaking my truth today? That's where my truth was coming from. And why I attracted those that weren't truthful. Because there was a part of me that says, no, my truth is this. Stop talking over me. Stop telling me that I'm a liar. Stop telling me that this is my fault. I absolutely know what's going on. I'm divine feminine. I know what's going on. Right? When you're standing in your power, those energies don't have a place to play anymore. They have to go and find someone else to play with and manipulate and find other games. Or they go away and they say, well, okay, what part was I playing in that? Was I being truthful with me? Was I blaming her for something that I actually did? Was I blaming her for not being truthful about where I was going and what I was doing? I mean, these are family, right? If it's family, do you not, are you not truthful with your family? Are they not the ones that matter, you know, the most? You know, why is it, you know, and I've said this, I've said this for, you know, so many years. Why is it oftentimes we seem to treat, and I always said this when I was a kid, why is it that sometimes we treat our family worse than we treat people we don't even know? That's not okay. It's not okay. They're the ones that care for you the most, no matter what. They love you unconditionally. No matter how pissy you get when you come in the door, they're always the ones saying, oh, it's okay, you'll have a great day tomorrow. You know, can I get you some food? You know, why is it that it's they some feel it's okay to treat family like worse than people that you meet on the street and yet you go into work the next day and you treat everybody at work really nice? It shouldn't it be all people all day equal? Yes, we have the various, you know, hats that we wear, you know, based on our level of intimacy and sharing, you know, your your star mate, your soulmate. You would have that beautiful, loving, and sacred communion and connection with that soulmate than you would someone at work. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you treat others in the way that you do at home and those ones that love you and care for you. You know, and I've, you know, with my kids, I've said that as my kids, you know, I wanted to give you everything that I didn't have, you know, and I will, I honor you, you know, and I'll do whatever I can just to continue that sacred relationship. That's practice. It takes work, right? It's a give and a take. It's equal. It's saying you're sacred. I'm sacred. You know, it's a sacred connection. It's a sacred co-creation. It's a sacred co communion. It's a giving and a taking of sacredness. If I'm truthful with you, I expect it back. And I absolutely know. I absolutely know. <laughs> you know, I know and I can sense it. And they know I can sense it. <laughs> you can't lie to me. I'm psychic. <laughs> I got my intuitive. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, come back here. Well, what did you just say? Because my radar is going off. <laughs> so those conversations don't even occur anymore because they know it's, a, it's an equal relationship of truth. You know, they all have the, you know, pushing the boundaries. But it's an equal respect and it's an equal truth. So those are some of the things that I've been inspired to come forward and, and talk about. And again, not in any way that it's a saying a wrong or a right, because it isn't. That's not the reason for me bringing this forward at all. It's part of my intimate share, sharing so that I can come forward and allow you a bit of the perspectives through which I've moved through of who I am as a being of source creator of light, of sacred child that source has always accepted me and loved me and supported me and all of the beings that support me and love me, all the beings that help me heal my body, all the beings that help me heal my emotional field, the ancestors from so many lineage of the divine feminine that I'm speaking on behalf of in the most eloquent and honoring way that I can to allow the divine feminine to be heard and to be honored and to be respected in a way that is absolutely placed in a new vibration of potentiation for all, for all, all beings, all planets everywhere. The divine feminine to be honored and respected and valued and really shift. This is where I'm sensing right now is really shift how we see 5D because sometimes how we see it in our world, you know, it's still based on an old world systems, but how can each and every one of us come forward and say, wow, I want to be a part of whatever archetype or whatever energy that you're feeling excited to be a part of 
but everything that you've experienced in your journey, if you look back and do your life reflection, honor and experience everything you've been through, will be that experience to know that it has allowed me that divine sacred claiming. You can't claim your sacredhood unless you've had those experiences to say, wow, that's enough. I'm sacred. You can't treat me that way. You know? <clears throat> and all of those experiences allow you to stand stronger in who you are and know how to feel into and sense into the vibration of truth and to truly trust it and honor it the first time. Don't allow time after time after time after time and all of a sudden three or four years go by and your intuition is saying, are you going to listen now? And that's when the bricks fall and the tower moments happen and you say, well, I, I just gave them so much truth and I wanted to believe the best, you know? And that there's nothing, there's nothing wrong in that when you want to believe the best in someone, but not when it sacrifices you and your light and you and your sense of self. You know, you can still have unconditional love from afar and from a distance when you know that others' behaviors are having an absolute effect on how you feel about yourself and how you are honoring yourself or not honoring yourself. And that's when you do your inner work and say, okay, I'm sacred and this is who I am. This is how I choose to live. And then let's start making plans so that, you know, I can start making some distance with those experiences that simply are not honoring me in what I've given out, you know, unconditional love and unconditional trust. And all of those experiences that, you know, the intention was to have as a sacred communion. You know? And how can um, all that we move through be more and more sacred and not judging any past experience at all. There's no judgment in it. It's, it's an exploration of discernment. It's an exploration of who we are as vibrational beings to say what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Everybody has a different level of appropriateness. And me and sharing my experience from when I was a child and the traumas that I had called in those certain experiences because there were still those levels and lessons of sacred owning and honoring of my power as a divine feminine. That was one of my, my soul's major lessons. Not only to deal with all of the persecutory timelines that I'm here feeling, and many of those timelines I was a man, <laughs> and a sacred shaman, and many, many sacred timelines where I was a very, um, um, you know, a very respected spiritual teacher, and many timelines where things went wrong, many timelines where things were, um, you know, very challenging and, and dark and dense, many timelines that were beautiful and peaceful. Um, and, you know, many of the timelines cut short for Divine Feminine when we had such great gifts and we want to do everything in our power. Every, there's not a day that goes by that I don't say, I'm here to serve all I want to do is serve. I'm here to serve all I want to do is serve, Source Creator. <clears throat> There's not a day that goes by. And as you can see, my throat clears because that's my truth. That's my truth. It's all, that's always been my truth, is to serve in whatever way and however way I can as light. And to understand the journey that I've gone through allows me to understand the psyche, the human conditioning, the human um, patterning, the conditioning that we all go through, how we give our power away, how we allow others to determine our value, how we allow others to determine our self-worth. And we call those energies in until we absolutely stand in our power and say, no, you don't determine my value and my worth. This size, this social structure doesn't determine my value and my worth. I do. So any contract put in front of me, I get to determine my worth within it. It doesn't matter what that contract may be. It's a symbolic experience. It's just a symbolism. But you know what we're saying. But you have to get to that point, you know, and everybody has their different path and their different threads and their different lessons and stories they need to work with. And we, it's, a, it's, again, we go back to not having this be any, any experience of, um, you know, um, you know, part of, you know, you know, the dark night of the soul. No, it's about honoring the sacred energetic movement that is life. And if we're not honoring that sacred movement of life, the emotions come and the emotions go, we transmute it. Emotions come, emotions go, we transmute it. But because we've been so imbalanced in all of these systems, the divine feminine, divine male, all aspects of our society has been so suppressed in the emotional experience that these emotions have not been allowed to be revealed, to be expressed, to be honored, to be creative, to be flowing, to be intelligent, whatever those emotions can use to be created and why we have created those miscreations, if you will. Not really miscreations, but <laughs> there's no miscreations in creation, but you know what I mean. Those, those experiences that just don't feel good. You don't have to get to that stage. 
It's about truthfulness of who we are as sacred beings. We are all sacred, regardless of the, the body it comes in, regardless of any type of ailment that that body might have, regardless of color, regardless of um, orders, regardless of anything. Every, every, every aspect of life is sacred. And it deserves its sacred truth. It deserves its sacred honor. It deserves to be known as sacred. It deserves to be treated as sacred. It deserves to be spoken to as sacred. It deserves to be the blessing that is sacredness. And in this, we begin healing all that is. Every day, allow yourself to create that soul growth template. How can I treat others and myself sacredly today? How can I honor what we've been through to say, wow, that was a ride. How can we change it today? Not in a way that it's like, um, you know, like back in my first days of ascension, okay, this is what we're gonna change today because <laughs> I'm a doer, <laughs> you know? I've got my Aries, that's my Aries. Aries are like, let's get her done. <laughs> change, 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 change. You know, you don't have to change things overnight. It's just like, okay, and do it in a really lighthearted and joyful way so that you can get as much buy-in from the circle as possible. After you've done your reflection time on how it's affected you, on how you feel about it, speaking your feelings, speaking your truth, speaking your experience, speaking your valued experience. Your experience is valued. Your experience is treasured. Your experience is you, and it's not wrong. No one can tell you that your experience is wrong. They don't have that right. They don't have the right to say, you took that wrong, no. I took it how I took it. I felt it. I have the vibrational feeling of it. I can see things beyond what you know I can see, and I'm not wrong. I know who I am. And that's really important for all children to own and claim. Because I remember throughout my entire life, oh no, you didn't see that, not that person. That person couldn't have done that. Um, yeah, I know what I know. And it just makes me think that why, why are we so, why are we so willing to keep seeing facades because it's too hard to face the truth. See what I'm saying? Truth allows you to be your sacredness. All you gotta do is just keep being sacred. Just keep being truthful. And your story will be healed. Your story will be. And all of the people that, you know, were not wanting to see the truth, your healing and your forgiveness of it. You're, you're allowing the forgiveness that you're giving in that moment, they're healing. Because I know truth. <laughs> That's been the gift God gave me when I came here. I know truth. I know truth, I know truth, I know truth. And part of my healing also is to be gentle and compassionate with myself and not berate myself for being too hard on myself for giving others such great benefit of doubt when it wasn't deserved. But like Master Jesus says, just release it all and forgive it all. The, the faster you can forgive it and release it, everyone goes into that infinity cycle of healing and the angels do their work. And we can't hang on to resentment or pain and suffering. And every day, just work out and spend five minutes in whatever energy, that trauma that you want to, to heal. That trauma becomes your greatest inner strength. And it becomes that clear telepathic pathway of your oneness with source. And your senses, bing, 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 you know exactly what's going on. Nothing can fool you. Nobody would try to fool you because you're standing there in your goddesshood, <laughs> in your godhood, and you're saying, I know truth. What do you want to throw at me? Come on. Runged it. <laughs> say what you want to say. I don't have to entangle with you if you're not bringing truth. You're not bringing sacredness. You're not bringing truth. Find someone else to play with. You're not playing the games anymore. Be on your way. And you get to stand there and you get to say that. This is who I am. I send you great light in your healing. And I'll always send you the highest light, you know. Just surrender and forgive it. Forgive it, forgive it, forgive it. God knows, God knows, God knows, God knows what God's doing. Their angels know what God's doing. Everyone's trying to heal the best that they can. Everybody is allowing each other to grow through compassionate um, honoring. But it comes from you first. You've got to honor you first and you've got to say, stop. That's enough. 
you're not going to you know, take from me anymore. You're not going to take my sense of self. You're not going to take my sense of knowing. You're not going to take my sense of truth and my sense of clarity because you want to play in the game of manipulation and um, non-accountability. You know, there's wounds underneath there that need to be healed. And that's where you begin, right? And it comes from everybody playing their own part. You come to play that part for them. That's why they contracted with you. They might not know it and they might be really angry about it because they don't see it yet. But if that's not reflected to them and somebody doesn't say no, that's, that's not okay, then that behavior just keeps going and their soul doesn't grow in the way that it's meant to. They're meant to heal those wounds. They're meant to transcend whatever conditioning and patterns that they've come with for their soul. But if we keep going and playing under the carpet, no, nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong, or we treat people outside of us better than we treat the ones inside of our house, none of those issues get resolved. We're not being our highest and our best for others. That's what Master Jesus said, be the fisherman. Show others how to fish. I love you unconditionally, and that's why I'm telling you, you can't keep doing this to me, because I love myself more. I do, I love myself more, and you can't treat me this way, it's not okay. You know? So let's talk about why this is going on, why it's going on. You know, get to the root of it, the crux of it, what's going on there, you know, and what help can you pull, pull in? Who, who can we call? How can you get a, a plan for healing? Because we can't, this can't go on anymore. It affects everybody. And those are just the threads from what happens in earlier childhood, right? And why it's, it's a beautiful and a, an incredible journey when you get to say, wow, you sit in that reflection, you know, at the, you know, when you're, when you're hitting the next birthday and the year is ending, <laughs> the year is ending, let's do a self-reflection. Wow, my life is pretty profound. You start with celebration, start with honoring, start with owning who you are, start with being a part of your own special story, start with being a part of your uniqueness, start with being claiming who you are as strong and being in power with God. Start with your sacredness. If you start there, your intentions will be there, your focus will be there, your vibration will be there, your truth will be there, and so too will all those that come to you. Those ones that were the most challenging and those ones that provided the greatest pain they're going to be the ones that will come to you and say, thank you so much, you made me a great master. Because you were calling me on all, this, all the crap that I was dealing, that I was hiding. You're creating masters. They might not know it or see it or admit it, and that's okay. But that's truth, that's the power of truth. That's the power of loving yourself. That's the power of saying enough is enough. In whatever way that is right for you and when it's right for you and honoring you and making sure you're calling in the support groups that you need um, there's various um, so many places of outreach um, i'll be honest with you absolutely honest with you and i don't recommend this <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> um, there has been very little help that i've reached out for and i don't recommend that because I know I come with the universal teams and I'm very tuned in and I'm clicked on and I know absolutely who's helping me vibrationally and energetically and I have the highest vibrational helpers in the universe. Most people don't know that though. <laughs> and this is why I don't, I don't, I don't, I, whatever that word is, I don't recommend that. Reach out, reach out, use support groups, use counselors, use healers, use um, um, life coaches, family, friends, you know, hospital workers, reach out and say, this is what's been happening. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to reach out to. I just need someone to talk to. What do you think about this? I just need someone to run by these things that have been happening. I want to create a balanced and stable environment. You know, there's lots and lots of outreach places. So don't feel as if what you're going through is minimized, right? Don't minimize what you're going through. Because if you're feeling and feeling the intuitions inside and your teams are showing you through your dreams and through the weird things that happen and your intuitions are saying, no, you need to call them on that, you know, and you just give them the benefit of the doubt again and again and again and again and again and again and again, call them on it. That's how things change. And in the, in the way that's right for you and you sensing your environment and you sensing the, the allowance of your honoring and your safety and all of those things, because we're all moving through things that many don't understand and many don't, you know, know how to heal and reach out. 
so just know that you can reach out and just again be lighthearted and, and and honoring and saying you know these these things really matter to me you know how can we just start healing bit by bit by bit and tuning into yourself and following your teams and your guides experience and and where they're guiding you to <clears throat> you have the help there's lots and lots of help um, regardless of what age you are just know that you can reach out and someone will find you help and someone will help you someone will help you know that your truth is valued and I will listen and I won't say that you're wrong <laughs> I won't you know your voice matters You know, that's one thing my kids know when they come to me and say, Mom, I want to talk. Absolutely. Whew, everything's done. What? We share. I'm listening. It's all truth. They like, oh, what's going on? It's your truth. It's your truth. It's valued and it's valuable. And it is who you are. You're becoming your sense of self. You're finding your sense of self. You're clarifying your sense of self. You're confirming your sense of self. You're allowing your sense of self to be your sense of self, the source. What is your intuition telling you? Trust it. Trust your intuition every step of the way. It is your divine feminine wisdom, intelligence, leadership, healing. That is your divine feminine. And I will speak and I will be of this. It's sacred. So sacred. So sacred. And in this vessel of sacredness, I speak to my truth. And I will no longer hold back and... My truth is valuable. Ride. It's been an incredible ride. And I forgive. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. I can't hold on to any of that density anymore. It doesn't feel good. Right? Just forgive it all. Forgive it all and just love yourself. I love who I am. Oh my gosh, I love who I've become. I know that my truth is, I'm just going to keep praying in my truth. I'm going to keep knowing that God has me. I'm going to keep knowing that my spirits and my guides, they're all preparing the fields for me. I know how to co-create. I know how to stand on my truth. I know my truth. I know what I sense. I know what I feel. I know what's occurred. I know my truth. Nobody can sell me a story that's different than that because I know my perspective. My truth is my truth and I know what my truth is. I know my truth. That sacredness. You gotta own it, claim it, claim your truth. And that's what they were showing me. When we level up to these new experiences of rebirth of who we are, that's claiming that next level and saying, yes, source, I've, I've learned the lessons and I'm stronger for it. And no matter how many times I've been broken, you will always put me back together again. And I'm gonna claim that next level. I'm gonna claim that next level, no matter how hard it is. Speak your truth, no matter how all your voice shakes. Speak it, speak your truth. No matter how it shakes. Even in those moments where you behaved in a way. Say, yeah, you know what? I treated you like crap. I'm so sorry. I'm speaking my truth. I experienced those things. And I went through this healing. And I honored myself in it. And I, I, I apologized. And I did everything that I could to, you know, to help reflect on those moments where I wasn't okay. And, you know, honor those that are also speaking their truth in being accountable and being, being, um, um, being forgiving of themselves and compassionate of themselves because they're carrying a lot of trauma as well. To forgive it all. Carrying trauma. And, and allow your sacredness to know that you don't have to partake in anything that does not feel comfortable and honoring of you as a sacred being. And that's our biggest, most highest frequency of story that we can emulate to all children, all generations. Being sacred in who you are as the evolutionaries. These children are magicians. These children are evolutionaries. Make no mistake about it. Until my last breath, breath, that is what I will say. That is what I will speak. That is my truth that I will follow. And I will act and I will behave in this way. I will say in my truth, these children are sacred. These children are sacred. These children are sacred. They are the evolutionaries. They are. And their bodies are sacred. They are meant to be treated sacredly. They are meant to be heard. They are meant to be nourished. They are meant to be cared for. They are meant to be protected. They are meant to be guided. They are meant to be lifted and held in the most high. <laughs> the most high. Speak even if your voice shakes. It doesn't matter. 
matter. Our voices matter. Our feelings matter. Our intuitions matter. Our truth matters. And if I say something's going on, it's going on. It matters. We can't heal it if we're not acknowledging it. I claim my voice. I claim my intuition. I claim the wisdom of who I am. I claim the divine feminine of who I am. I claim the beauty of who I am. I claim my sacredness. This is who I am. And I stand proudly in it. And in doing so, perhaps it'll help others. But I'm going to be a part of this new wave and I'm going to claim this next level up source. Today I offer, I offer myself to you, source creator. In whatever ways that my stories have served and that I've learned and I've claimed, I will level up. I offer myself to creation because I know my story matters to help bring consciousness in any way. So thank you for allowing me this beautiful personal vlog. <laughs> and um, intimate gathering, thank you. And the teams are saying it. What an intimate gathering of truthfulness, thank you. Sending you all a lot of love. And in our gathering and in our oneness and in our sharing and in our caring and in our truthfulness, we allow higher vibrations of love and all of those stuck energies come up to be healed and released. And just to open up to the Holy Source Creator, please heal and re repair the unprecedented healing that Jesus and the Holy Christ and all of the light beings that are offering us right now as we're just releasing everything that needs to be released to let go. I release anything that I've been hanging on to, any resentment, any anger, anything that is not divine and sacred, anything that is not in alignment with my destiny, I release it all. I release it all and I reclaim who I am as sacred. I reclaim who I am as a divine voice of strength and, and honor and wisdom. I own who I am as my own I am presence and I allow my soul to be rebirthed and be renewed in a new moment, a new now moment. And that I live as um, integrity. I live as truth and I live as divine and divine excitement. Yeah. So we can create a new dance with greater songs of harmony, of greater songs of oneness and reaching out and sharing and caring and healing for all. We're one. Yay. We love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.